the court of our regular producers down with Bob Hope at the Desert Classic and our our associate producer, Mr. Peter LaSalle, is filling in. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about Peter. He's, uh, he's of Dutch origin, and it's really a Horatio Alger story. Uh, it's very touching. Uh, Peter arrived at Ellis Island, no formal education, no skills, unable to speak a word of the English language, and knew there was only one hope for him, to get into television. <laughs> Still does not speak one word of the English language. I have a late bulletin. I just took off the just, teletype. Yes, just came out on, I think, United Press. Uh, CBS announced that uh, All in the Family will be returning next year with Billy Carter playing the role of Archie Bunker. I assume you've been following Billy Carter's latest faux pas. You didn't hear what he did down in... In Plains, Georgia, with the uh, Libyan delegation that he was showing around Plains? How can I delicately put this? Uh, well, let me put it this way. There's a new city ordinance in Plains, Georgia, went in effect today. From now on, Miss Lillian has to carry a billy scooper with her on the streets. Uh, does that explain what I'm telling you? You know, the Carter administration has had some embarrassing leaks, but this one takes the cake. Uh, we live in a great country, though. Where else can a gas station attendant have a foreign policy? Not many places, I warrant. Jimmy Carter has asked his evangelist sister, Ruth Stapleton, to help. The president asked Ruth to lay hands on Billy, right over his mouth. I think the president, though, handled the problem very cleverly. He just appointed Billy as new ambassador to the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> you see the trouble with... I have plenty of time. I can wait for these, you know. If you want to pass these on and enjoy them to the fullest, it's all right. Uh, see, the trouble with Billy is that he talks before he thinks. The trouble with Jimmy is he thinks before he talks. <laughs> you don't have to pass that one on if you don't want to. We got some funny things that are going to happen tonight on the show later for the Mighty Carson Art Players, for example, are going to show you a couple of hitherto unrevealed facts about the life of Superman that most people that most people do not know. What was I talking about? I don't know why I talked about that. Well, I just happened to think of it because it's coming up next. Jerry Brown, our governor out here. What a transition! No transition at all. I just go right into him. You know, he was inaugurated yesterday. He sat down with Mike Curb today. Now, Mike Curb was elected lieutenant governor of California, and Jerry explained uh, the new duties uh, of the lieutenant governor, and they're all biggies. Uh, for example, Mike Curb, he has his job is to put his ear, keep his ear to the San Andreas Fault, <laughs> waiting for an earthquake, and then he notifies the state. He's personally in charge of oiling the ball bearings on Linda Ronstadt's roller skates. <laughs> And Mike's been in, put in charge of a long-range program drawing up plans for the San Fernando Valley subway. <laughs> Which, of course, there isn't any such thing. <laughs> they thought there was a subway. <laughs> Did you... Uh, have you been following the lawsuit in Israel versus McDonald's? If you haven't seen that, it's hysterical. McDonald's got very angry because some Sharpie in Israel, I think it was in Tel Aviv, opened a place called Mac David's in which he sold Big Macs. And they had the McDonald's logo up there, and McDonald's here in this country did not think that was very funny, and they sued the guy. And they won the first round. A judge has just barred Mac David's, the place in Israel, from using the words Big Mac in his menu. Now, Mac David's insists that they're not copying McDonald's whatsoever. As a matter of fact, they said Mac, Mac David claims that their Big Mac is completely different than the Big Mac here. It contains meat. <laughs> It was a long trip for a laugh, but we got there, didn't we? <laughs> Another government report, uh, this one's on smoking also, but uh, something else about it. In an effort to get people to stop smoking marijuana in this country, the government is thinking about putting a sales tax on rolling paper. <laughs> yeah, hiss, you're right, yeah. 
So people are coming up with some alternatives to zigzag. Today on TV, I saw Mr. Whipple saying, please don't smoke the Charmin. <laughs> Here's the crazy news item of the day, but absolutely true. In St. Joseph, Missouri, a man was giving 30 days in jail for walking into a drugstore and stealing two Alka-Seltzer tablets. That's absolutely true. While the man was in the act of dropping the Alka-Seltzer in a glass of water, two policemen sneaked up behind and arrested him. It was a case of plop, plop, fuzz, fuzz. <laughs> You didn't boo when I was serving on the USS Pennsylvania. <laughs> when I say serving, I mean it. I was a mess steward. I was serving. <laughs> anyway, tonight, we've, this is, I'm looking forward to the show. This is going to be crazy or, or not. We have Mr. Richard Pryor and Tim Conway together on the same show. <laughs> Dr. Lennon Smith, a little baby doctor, famous baby doctor. <laughs> doctor. I don't, we do that all the time, and we're going to keep doing it. <laughs> And in just a moment, the Mighty Carson art players will reveal to you some unreleased secrets about Superman. So thanks for coming. We'll be right with you in just a moment. One of the biggest film hits this year is a movie version of Superman. As you know, Clark Kent, mild manner reporter for the Daily Planet, becomes a man of steel in order to fight the forces of evil. We've uncovered a little-known fact about Clark Kent and Superman. And right now, we'd like to show you what we mean. Clark Kent and Lois Lane have worked together as reporters on the Daily Planet for many years, side by side. Yet this working relationship has never blossomed into a serious romance. We wondered if someday Lois and Clark ever did get married, what their, their wedding night might be like. This is it, Lois, the, the bridal suite. I never dreamed I'd be marrying you, Clark. Well, Lois, I think now you can throw away your notepad and your pencil. We don't need two reporters in this family. I always dreamed of marrying a real man like Superman, but who can wait forever? So I figured I may as well marry a cowardly simp like you. You're sweet, Lois. What are you doing? Oh, uh, never mind, Lois. Thank goodness for this x-ray vision. That woman in the next bed making love to the man. And the other woman. And the other man. And the Swiss bell ringer. And the St. Bernard. I've never seen seven people in love before. Will you quit mumbling, Clark? Yes. Shouldn't we get ready for bed? Yes, I think you're right, Lois. I haven't slept in two weeks. It's, it's murder when you can see through your eyelids. <laughs> Lois, do we, do we need anything from room service? Yeah, send up the bellhop. What do you want him to bring? Just himself. Yeah. Just get out of your clothes, Lois. I, I think when we do, I, I may have a pleasant surprise for you. A pleasant surprise? You mean, you won't require me to consummate our marriage? No, I mean, even better, Lois. Can you give me a hint? Yes, I'll give you a hint. I can... I can go up, up, and away. Show up. <laughs> no, Lois, you... No, Lois, you don't understand. You see, during the day, I'm a mild-mannered reporter, but at night, I put on leotards and a cape. I think I spotted you along Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah. By the way, Lois, I don't think I've asked you this before, but which side of the bed do you sleep on? 
The right side. Why is that? It's closer to the bathroom in case you make me sick. <laughs> okay, Lois, here I... Here I come. Clark? No, not Clark. Look. It's Superman. I never would have guessed. That's right. Uh, you know, Lois, I... I want this to be so right for the both of us. Oh, Superman. <clears throat> Then it's true what they say about you. What do you mean, Lois? You are faster than a speeding bullet. <laughs> Just a moment. Richard Pryor is our guest tonight, along with Tim Conway, Dr. Lennon Smith. <laughs> oh, there he is. Oh. Uh. Yeah. Super. <laughs> why? Why, why, do, why are we trying to do these things live? Oh. You know, we could stop and go like they do on the weekly shows and no, no. shoot do one thing one day. This is more fun. Right. Right. You, I've said this before. It is more fun to be backstage during the change. Yeah. Did you ever try to tie your tie and button your shirt while you have one leg up? Somebody's trying to put a pair of pants on. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I remember there was one yeah, that's right. in Florida, but oh, that was a different Florida, thing. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, that involved the local yeah. constabulary, the, we the, the know police. The police were coming, yes. But one leg up trying to tie your yes. tie, somebody, it is, it is really crazy. Good practice for this work. So I want to thank uh, our set designer again, uh, John Schramm. Great. He did a wonderful job last night. And. And Sharon and Charles in the wardrobe department do a magnificent right. job putting all those costumes together and getting them to fit and getting them on you. Yeah. I mean, that's... Oh. You made a very good-looking Superman. What? You looked very good there. I've flown in my times. Well, I... <laughs> I know that, but they don't. <laughs> no, that looked good. Did you ever think your day would come when Superman would be a big hit again? Yeah. I guess it's... I haven't seen the picture yet, but I understand it's they a lot of fun. it's sensational. Don't we have Christopher Reeves coming on the show? Uh... Not yet. That's right. His, uh, his uniform is not back in the cleaners, but as soon as, as, soon as they get his cape back, he will... They claim that the uh, flying sequences are extraordinary. That they I'm looking forward fly. to tonight's show for a lot of reasons. Yeah. Uh, we have two extremely funny gentlemen, and here is one here that uh, breaks me up all the time. He has won an Emmy. Uh, he's given television viewers many, many hilarious uh, moments over the years, especially with the Carol Burnett show. And he's going to have his own special. It's called... And they had a lot of conferences about what to call this, and they came up with the executives with the, the Tim Conway Show. Oh. They were going to call it Hello, Tim, but they decided to call it the T Tim Conway Show. <laughs> and it's going to... There's a big conference about this. It's going to air, they say. Well, that's good. What? They made the show. It's good that it's going to air. It's going to be shown, yeah. actually, this coming Monday night, January 15th, at 8 p.m., on another network. <laughs> Do you think people go to other shows on another network and talk about shows that are going to be on this network? Probably. Well, I hope so. And they always say on another... Another network. They mean another, us then when they, they say They mean that. us when they say that. And, of course, you can check your local uh, uh, Chase calendar of events for which network that is. <laughs> Would you welcome... I'm, I'm leaking all over the place here. <laughs> Mr. Tim Conway. What Just, you yeah, got to time it just right. Time it just right. Huh? The funny sketch. Thank you. Do you like yeah. that? No, but it was a funny sketch. 
yeah. personal opinions uh, notwithstanding. No, no, no. It really was. I didn't know you were doing that actually live. Yes, yes. yes. Until I saw you coming running back there in your underwear. That's cute. Yes. Good stuff. I'm yeah. cute in my skivvies, aren't I? Very nice, yes. You've, yeah. you've heard me talking about those changes. You've gone through a lot of those over the years, and it does get hysterical back there. I was uh, playing Vegas one time, and I was supposed to come out in a uh, different outfit and had 30 seconds to do it in, and there were two girls who were changing me, which was great. And uh, they did the whole thing, and I came out, and I didn't have the shirt on. Just the tie and the whole thing, and uh, they forgot the shirt. Hi. Oh, all right. I can get that Nothing up. you can do about it at no, all. No, no, because you're on, and it's show business. That's important. Yeah. In our lives. And it, it is your life, isn't it? Show, show business is my life, yes. For the, mo for the better part. For the of it. most part of it now, anyway, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. <laughs> it's exciting. It is. To get paid for the thing you, you love to do, as they to, say. To go out and entertain an audience. Have to an bear audience. yourself Hear those in front laughs. of an audience. Hear Just to get laughs. a couple of laughs and make other people smile when you're so <laughs> miserable. <laughs> and take home a few thousand a week, doesn't it? Yeah, hurt. that's the important thing. That's the main yeah, thing. that's the main thing. A lot of people don't think we're in it for the money. But I am. <laughs> I've often heard that. Yeah. You've got an adjustment. Yeah, a lot money. of people think I want to get to the top. That's not necessarily so. No. <laughs> Paycheck's the big thing to me. <laughs> I don't uh, particularly care about ratings or anything. If the paycheck clears, <laughs> <laughs> and many of them in this business haven't the past That's few true. years, <laughs> but neither here nor there. Yeah. So how I've not seen you for well, I guess the last time. You only come here and you got something to plug. That's I right. See yeah. You, uh... Yeah. Uh, so the show will be on Monday uh, at eight o'clock on another, another network. network. Yeah. If I could plug now, can I go? Or no? No. 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 no, 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 no. Oh, got to stick around. Okay. Should never yeah. do, should do the plug at the last, you see. That's, That's right. Yeah. yeah, It's an interesting show. It's Tell us 56 about it. minutes long. 56. Is, yeah, which is the important thing. A lot of the shows are short. But uh, this is... Uh, we thought, you know, Carol and Joe, uh, who are also man and wife, as uh, uh, you may know, uh, thought of uh, one thing. One, uh, Carol Burnett and uh, Joe Hamilton. They're man and wife? Yeah, didn't you know that? Of course. Oh. <laughs> What's that a put on you, silly? Guy? Yeah. They thought of a thing that, uh, uh, especially I think it kind of applies to my show, that there should be a comedy patrol that uh, instead of getting a rating, that uh, after you do a show, the comedy patrol comes by, and if your show is bad, they actually come to your house and shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that prevent a lot of bad shows? Really, because right. you'd think twice before you actually put a show on. Yeah, you so know what I mean? Vigilante kind of. Yeah, a guy comes and says, I saw your show. <laughs> No longer, it, yeah. You have to get out of show business and no right. longer perform. Right. Lots of that. There wouldn't be much left on television. No, that's true. Well, if you only got shot in the foot, it wasn't that bad. You know what right. I mean? Well, yeah. Um, now, you haven't done a special since... Uh, since my last... Since your last special. Yeah. Yeah. I knew there was a time gap. Yeah, there, there was. You yeah, wouldn't do one I, Thursday and one well, Friday. No, it makes no, no you sense. wouldn't want to do one every night. No. Because then really wouldn't want to be a special that way, yeah. There's nothing special about being on every night. Mm, not we, to me. we no, found sir. out. Yeah. <laughs> uh... So it's been some time since you've done your last special. It's been almost, uh, almost a year. Almost yeah. a year. Yeah, the last one uh, we were doing, the uh, folks came down from the network and said, don't do this anymore. Oh, so no, they stopped doing that. No, they didn't. That was a funny show. I saw it. Yeah, that was the one on, uh, yeah, Patton. That was also almost an hour long, too. Yeah. yeah. That's the important thing. Get them an hour long. That's right. Yeah. How is the... You knew you'd been treating you. Everything going well? Yeah, so, real fine. Yeah, it's been a real good year so far. Yeah, <laughs> that's one of our stock questions. Yeah, is it really? Oh, well, I didn't. When you've know been here that. a long time, you uh, you jump at anything. I uh, love the uh, like, yeah. How are how are the kids? You know. Yeah, uh, I loved uh, starting with an earthquake. I thought that was good. Yeah. That's right. Where were you during when I, when the first hit? I was watching, as most people, the Rose Bowl, and uh, had to uh, you know get the kids out of the way to get outside because <laughs> a situation like that. Kids cluttered up yeah, the door well, today. They were all under that door jam. They're you know, selfish. Know. They're selfish <laughs> little people. They really are. You know, I've never found that out until a crisis like that. They will try to protect themselves. Selfish actually. little people. <laughs> it's grim. Um, we had a th when the other one hit, which was about what, maybe a year ago. Remember the one that hit early in the morning, the six thirty number. Of course, after the that was big almost, one. That was a long time ago. Yeah, that but was... after the big one, then you all uh, you got the flashlights and you got uh, the uh, you know everything prepared and you said, okay, you go down the stairway if it hits here and up there. And uh, then one hit about a year later, and they all remembered it was 6.45 in the morning, so we all ran outside uh, in our underwear, and uh, there we were on the front lawn, uh, eight of us in our underwear. Now, the people going by in a car don't know there was an earthquake. Right. <laughs> a lot of that, you know. <laughs> Two of us going by yeah, the Conway you know, home going, I do mm. fine. We, have, we always come out here in our underwear about 6.45. <laughs> you know, I keep saying every time there's an earthquake, well, maybe you do this also. You know, maybe I better lay in some... First aid supplies, Provisions, a little, a little yeah. Coleman stove in case the gas goes out, and uh, one of those big beam lights, and I never do. 
Well, I think if you have all those provisions, uh, wouldn't the people who don't have them come and beat you up and take them away? <laughs> no, because I also have a very big gun. A yeah, big gun. that's good. Yeah, that, a gun that, is good. That keeps yeah. the sore losers away from your front door. <laughs> right, and yeah. Yeah. yeah, I would... Uh, Every man for himself on earth way. I would hope to become a looter in a situation like that. That's right. <laughs> Probably more proper. Raper and pillager. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. Those are scary, though. They really, uh, you don't know uh, until you've been through one what they're actually like. I, uh, I remember right. that one that was... Uh, it was about six... Strangely enough, you know, Bob Newhart was on the show the night that they had that big one. That was about, what, six years ago? Yeah. When it rumbled at about yeah. 6.40 or 6.30 in the morning. Mm-hmm. And that night while we were doing the show, there was a little, one of those aftershocks. Mm-hmm. And we heard it from the back of the audience because they felt it, the building. And you heard this... Oh, and Newhart and I looked at each other like, they don't mm-hmm. like us, we're dying. Because mm-hmm. you heard this... Oh! Yeah. <laughs> and we we're going, Bob's sister. Yeah. And it came down, and all of a sudden, we still have the tape, yeah. and you see the camera. Right, I remember that. Yeah. We've replayed it, and you see the camera just for a second go like this. Yeah, actually, it was the cameraman. Yeah, yeah. yes. The was, he was yeah. over already, and Pepe's yeah. having a couple of margaritas by the time. You know, I, in doing a lot of shows, as we do, you know, we do physical stuff, they put you on a wire to do flips and things like that, you know, and then they hang you. I was at Universal one time uh, uh, when they thought it would be funny to leave me there at lunch, you know, just hanging, you know, 12 feet off the ground. So now, whenever I do any of those things, the first thing I get is a pair of wire cutters, because if you are doing something and there's an earthquake, you don't find a stagehand going, we're going to get him down. That's right. <laughs> No, sir. They're in the 48 yeah. Dodge heading yeah. for Barstow. Yeah, he's, he's on the bus on the way home, you know, and you're going, Boy. That was a big one. Yeah, and you can't unscrew those things until are the guy you, comes uh, to the ring. Are you good in uh, situations, critical situations like that? Do you keep composed? Women, they say, always look to men, but you find women sometimes are much uh, more calm and uh, can think a little clearer. In a situation like that, I will normally grab a woman. Yeah. Grab a woman? Yeah. I think it's important. Throw yeah. her on top of sure. you to avoid oh, yeah. falling debris, yeah, right. I suppose. Yes, right, yeah. Uh, no, I kind of panic. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't handle that well at all. I try to act calm, but I cry everything. You, know, that's, you, you know. try to be cool, but unless you've really been in an earthquake, it's just, you, there's nothing to equate it with. Yeah. It's a little disorienting, and, and everything kind of goes this way, and you don't know what really to yeah, do. Yeah, and the noise. Does, does this fly bother you? No, that's okay. Well, oh. that's cute. How do you keep him on there? Look at this. I know no, he's he going to be a train. Show. Is that correct? Okay, yeah. there he goes. Yeah. Uh, he'll come back here. That's okay, good. Now he's um, can you make him go on your face? Yeah. Sure. Oh. <laughs> there he goes. That's good. Good. Hey, come, here. come here. He'll be he'll be back in a second. Yeah, okay. Sometimes when things aren't working, you know, you'll see the fly come in. Fly oh. like that again. That's marvelous. We keep it in case the guests don't really go well and we <laughs> yeah, go and the, not that you are. No, no, I like and hey, we 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 cue the fly. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I have to do a commercial here. Oh, you can I... stay with us a while, even though you've plugged your show. Yeah. Oh, I can? Sure. Oh, okay. Sure. Well, like most of those big guys say, you know, I have to get back to the shooting schedule. Yeah, got yeah. nothing to do, huh? No. Okay. No, I can stay all month. <laughs> all right, we'll do this. We're going to come I right back. I can stay all month, actually. Stay here for a month. Monday night, I want to mention. Uh, you know who's going to be hosting the show on Monday night? Harvey Corman. I'm going to come and sit right in that seat there when he does the monologue. Oh, you're going to kill him. Uh, stare kill. there with a little spinach in my teeth. Well, that's all you. <laughs> all you have to do is look at Harvey, and he oh, yeah. goes at, and he goes catatonic. Not well. And he's going to be here with Bonnie Franklin, Tom Dreesen, uh, baseball's Bob Euchre, and Helen Gurley Brown. And on Tuesday night, we have the. I always feel awkward saying this. The best of Carson. Uh huh. Yeah. And we have people like Beverly Sills, whom is right there, Mr. Tony Randall, mm-hmm. who is there. It's a funny uh, comedian by the name of George Miller. Mm-hmm. And uh, from Cornell, Dr. Carl Sagan is with us mm-hmm. on Tuesday. Later in the week, we have Dick Cavett, Tony Newley, Lauren McCall, George Burns, Marvin Hamlish, and, and Donald J. Duck. That's right. Donald Duck will be on the show. There is uh-huh. a man named Donald oh, really? J. Duck. Oh. I think he's with the Department of Interiors with the United States government. And his legitimate name is Donald Duck. Now, you want to talk about going through life with problems? Yeah, what a nice, uh, nice position to, a, to be in. Is he going to a motel? <laughs> yes. Huh? Have your name? Oh, Mr. Donald Mrs. Duck. Duck. Yeah. <laughs> All right, come on, lock him up. That's right. <laughs> I'm around here writing that down. Speaking of Harvey, you know how much I admire you and Harvey. You, and they're replaying. In that uh, order, incidentally? No, 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 not simply. So. You and Harvey, or yeah, Harvey and you? Yeah. Oh, no, it should be Either me. way, yeah, yeah. both of you. Yeah. Crack me up. And they've been rerunning a lot of the... Composites of Carol's show mm-hmm. uh, around the country, and those sketches hold up. But you and Harvey have got something going between you. He doesn't seem to be able to break you up very often. But you will have you look at him, you eyeball him. Yeah. 
And Harvey, the, the mouth starts to go, the eyes dance, <laughs> uh, the, the jaw trembles, he, the, the shoulders start to go. Yeah, and, and all I you have to do is just give him one. You must too, torture yeah. him. It's, it kind of started, we were uh, in his dressing room one time, I was doing the show, and he was uh, dressed in a chicken outfit <laughs> and had on uh, the big feet, he had uh, red uh, stockings on, pantyhose, and he had a chicken body and chicken wings and this uh, huge chicken head. In order to talk to me, he had to lift up the beak. And, you know, listen, and I was dressed as an Avon lady. And... Uh, <laughs> just sitting there in a dress with pantyhose and stockings and earrings and uh, everything. And he was telling me a, a something, a serious problem, which he was involved in at home. And he's going, you know, I don't know. And he's walking up and down with these chicken feet going, I feel, you know, and boy, my life, and I can see it. And I'm going, well, you know, I, I feel, basically. And I, I suddenly realized that a chicken talking to an Avon lady. This isn't right. And I said... You know, Harv, I'm really interested in this, but uh, c could we wait until later when you're not a chicken and I'm not an Avon lady? You know? So we went out to do a sketch, which we never did, which is falling down time. And yeah. from that time on, I think we kind of, whenever we met each other's eyes, kind of said, you know, these two guys at our age ought to get a job. Yeah. You know, because it is, around it's these... hard for the audience to understand sometimes why people get uncontrollable, but uh, I guess it's like laughing in church or something. You're not supposed to do it. We're supposed right. to be professional. Ed and I have been guilty on many occasions of doing nothing more than just getting the giggles. Coming out, yeah, and, and it's not, all over. And not yeah, being able to stop. Yeah. Have you tried to break him up and sometimes... It, it uh, I, I, I could just look at him and he would go, but he would try and break me up and he would say something or do something and go, and I wouldn't do anything and he'd go, oh, nuts. And then he would laugh at him trying to break up me. Right. Uh, I sat one time for, through a whole sketch for 10 minutes with spinach in my teeth going like this and he never laughed and then I fell down for about 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you try it, it it's tough, but... Uh, he, uh, there was one sketch where I was supposed to be a pilot coming on to the set, and uh, he opens the door and he said, are you ready? And I was, I had them bring in a toilet, and I was sitting on the toilet when he said, are you ready? And I, off stage. Off stage. And uh, so he started laughing, and he said, uh, you know, that was the dress show, and for the air show, I said, I'm going to do something even funnier. And he said, oh, no, you won't get me this time. So I didn't do anything. I just stood there. And when he opened the door, he went, and he was so surprised just to see me standing there. He went even more than the first time. It's called the reverse yeah. breaking yeah, right. up, waiting for the... Uh, that doesn't happen. Yeah. Ralph Gokar, our makeup man, was telling me, he says, you know, I used to work for Tim Conway back in Cleveland. Right. And then I remember, New you here, you started as a television director... Right. ...in Cleveland. Couldn't direct. Really? I sold myself as a director, and a gentleman named Ernie Anderson, who's now a big uh, uh, announcer out here, he does mostly A-B... Gosh, C promos. <laughs> and, uh... They won't know. You only said two letters. Right. A-B, they'll never... No. They'll never figure it out. Um... I sold him as talent and me as a director, and uh, he had never been talent, and I had never directed. That's weird. So uh, he had a kind of a talk show on a movie thing, and uh, I never knew how to what they call back time, so that when the program ended, you actually had the whole movie in that hour and a half. <laughs> and uh, the program would always go off, and we would never have the end of the movie. <laughs> and it wasn't until we showed Citizen Kane that people began to get disturbed, because... <laughs> They wanted to see Rosebud at the end and all that, I guess, was very important to them. And that's the first time I realized that they were really interested in the endings of movies. Uh, so we would show the endings of the movies on Friday. Just, yeah, just the endings of what we had missed. Just to carry yeah. it over. Yeah, that lasted about a week, and then they decided that uh, it would be better if I wasn't a director. Is that when you just got into talent there? Um, well, we had the show was so bad that we couldn't get anybody to come on as a guest, so I would be the guest, too. And... Uh, uh, Ernie would say, you know, here's a bullfighter, here's a trumpet player, here's a whatever, and I'd just leave the cameras on on, and I'd come out and be a bullfighter or whatever. It's a great experience. Yeah, it sure was. <laughs> then, uh... No, I mean that, because yeah, I started locally back in Omaha doing a show in the afternoon. <laughs> Omaha. Ah, a lot of applause for locally. That's right, yeah. locally gets very big. And used to do an hour show three times a week with nothing. So you start doing everything. Right. You'd act silly, it didn't make any difference. We just tried to kill to get, the time. Yeah, I tried to get guests on. We'd say, you know, like when Bob Feller was uh, uh, big with the Cleveland Indians, we'd say Bob Feller was going to be the guest today, and we'd never ask Bob. You know, just, just, yeah. Because we'd hold an audience that way. And uh, then Bob would call and go, listen, I wouldn't be on that piece of junk. And we'd go, at the next break, we'd say, well, he called and he's on his way. Uh, he's uh, tied up in traffic, but he'll be here. And uh, then at the end of the show, he'd say, well, here's Bob. Oh, we don't have time? Well, maybe tomorrow. And uh, Can't get away with that no, too often. No, the audience gets yeah, The endings of the movies and, the, and that kind of stuff lasted about two weeks. And then I was uh, back down writing promos again. Yeah. When you take your kids out, and you got a, you got a, a passel of them, as they say. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, it's about six. About six yeah. running around. Yeah, I don't know how old they are. They're not... Uh, they must be about 16 to 8, I would imagine. Right, right yeah. there. That must be kind of a, a, a 
a handful when you go on a trip or a vacation or... I, uh, well, yeah, it is. Anywhere, well, we take a whole plane or, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> it's, um... Well, one time, I had uh, three kids playing... Well, I actually had two kids. Uh, Timmy and Patrick were playing Little League. This shows you the sense of uh, uh, humor that people have in Little League because they're rough. They really are. I just went to enjoy it for the kids and everything, and they asked me to umpire one day, third that's base. All, that's yeah, all over. That's the worst. All over. But my first boy got up. Timmy, he got a hit. My second boy got up. Pat, he got a hit, and they were short that day. Now, those games, you know, they go to... The scores usually average around 107 to 83, you know. <laughs> When you go to see one of those games, you don't get a seat. You just get a condominium. And it is kind of uh, stay out there in the sun because they go on forever. You know, then nobody ever gets out. And they don't have balls to strike. You just keep pitching until they hit it. So you're there for days, you know. But anyway, two of my boys are now on, second and first. So they were short, so they let Jamie bat that day. Now, he's only about five at the time. So, bang, he hits the ball and it rolls to the pitcher. Now, instead of the pitcher throwing to first to get him out, he decides to throw it to third to get... Timmy out. Now, Timmy started sliding about where the shortstop was standing. So, <laughs> long slide. Slid, got up, slid again, slid again. <laughs> slid, slid. He, he had the slide down, but it was a little early. You, you know it. what I mean? So, by the time he got to third, I thought, this is great. My three boys are going to be on base. So, the guy was, he did, all he had to do is touch the base, he would have been out. But he, he saw this kid kept sliding, sliding. So, I figured, well, I'll tag him when he comes over here. So, he tagged him. He was out by 20 yards. And so, Timmy, as he was walking, he stood on the base, and I said, Safe! Well, you never saw so many people come out of the stands, and I... <laughs> I said, wait a minute, hold on, whoa, whoa, yeah, they, they were going to kill me, you know. What do you mean, safe, you know? And I said, hey, the score is 108 to 5. What do we care, you know? <laughs> Three boys are on base. The parents are the one who take it serious. Oh, yeah, and yeah. And it can lead to fisticuffs and screaming and yeah. fighting. Yeah. yeah. I never got involved in that. No, that's, uh, so they didn't play next year. By the way, I, I didn't ask you who was on your special, and I should have. Oh, that's with not you. important. Well, it is important. Oh, it is, too. Yeah, sure it is. Uh, Carol Burnett, Strangers May Sing. Wow, yeah. super. Uh, and, uh, Don, uh, Knotts. And uh, Don and I did a picture for, uh, Disney called The Apple Dumpling Gang. You probably saw that. Right. Up for a lot of Academy Awards. <laughs> and, uh, we're doing another one down in Atlanta now called The Prize Fighter. You're I Don. become the uh, world championship uh, boxer. You? Yeah. Don's my manager. It's a serious drama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, village people, you know, they sing YMCA. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. That's a big hit. Yeah. And uh, who else? Uh, we got s Instead of having uh, grown-up dancers, we had little kid dancers, 8 to 12. We got 16 of those tapping their full heads off. You know, the last... Uh, on your special, when you dance, you dance well. I didn't yeah, realize didn't I? that. You yeah. danced extremely well. You know what that was, don't you? No. It was a guy with a mask of me on. Come on now. I would swear, really. But we about? never we never revealed the fact that it was. And everybody thought it was me. Hold it now. No, really. They made a rubber mask, and that was the guy dancing his head off. I only did the close shot, where I went, Hi, how you doing? And they went, Why? Are you and putting then, me on? No. And everybody thought it was me. I'm sitting here like a dummy. That's what I said. Saying, You know, I believed it was me. <laughs> well, it's you can take no. a boy out of the country, but... Uh, yeah. I want that, and you're doing great believe, things. Yeah. And I looked at it, and I said... Yeah. Conway doesn't... I've never I seen him dance like that. I it was me, too. Yeah. And it was just you and the close-ups? That's right. Did anybody know? Uh, I didn't even know. No. No, actually, they didn't. People who knew me said that they swore that was me. I did. Yeah, I did because it, it had this rubber mask. It was incredible. Yeah. Well, cool. then you don't dance good at all. I'm taking that back. No, I don't dance at all. I have no sense of rhythm. That's why I have six kids. But I want to tell you. <laughs> but, but, but seriously, folks. Hey, all right. Show business, folks. We're going to be right back. Stay where you are. Okay, folks, moving along here. Club High Hall. My next guest, I'm a, I'm a big fan of his also. Uh, he is uh, starring in the new Neil Simon film, California Suite, and on the 9th of February... Motion picture called Richard Pryor Live in Concert is going to be opening in theaters all over the country, which ought to be crazy because he is. Well, what are you looking so? Uh... I was going to say, you mean it's for the theater? Apparently, not yeah. A, it's not a television show. Apparently, they must have filmed right. a Richie when he was working in concert. Yeah. And he is a funny man. Would you welcome Richard Pryor? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> How are you, Rich? I'm fine, thank you. Things in your life good? Yes, everything's wonderful, Johnny. Good. Just as great. Just as great, huh? <laughs> Really... Haven't been doing any sniping for the new year or anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> just keep life interesting, you know? No, I haven't been doing anything. <laughs> I was just, uh, you know, you were talking about the earthquake and it happened. Um, were you watching the game then? Yes, I was. I was, I was in bed uh, watching and the kids, uh, <laughs> my kids run in there and they were really scared. And uh, I don't know why I brought that up. Well, because his kids were scared. I remember that in the big one, when they had the big earthquake, I lived in a building on Sunset. And it was a 14-story building, and I lived in the, on the third floor, but it was in the basement. <laughs> and, and, and it was early in, in the morning, and I was, I was in bed, and I was, I was naked. And I was just laying there, and the windows start popping out. And I said, God, this is it. And I grabbed a samurai sword and, and a fifth of whiskey and went, went out in the streets. And everybody, after that earthquake, everybody started getting very friendly with black people. With us. You, you they figured we knew God or something. You don't, you don't mess with a cat with a samurai sword and a bottle of whiskey. No, you just no. say, hi, neighbor. They were going, there was a lot of people going, hi. Oh, you. Yeah. No, it just was really weird. People was like the Valley uh, uh, Village of the Damned or something. People really just, they hadn't... Uh, they uh, are frightening, those things. Yes. People back east, they don't know then. They think it's going to fall No, off. they think it's like in the movies, really funny. It uh, hurts. I just saw your, uh, I just it was glomming your shoes there. Glomming mm -hmm. my shoes? Yeah. Is that anything like looking at? Yes, looking <laughs> close, yes, it's... Uh, yes, it's my shoes. And, but uh, they're gold. Yes, uh, gold, uh, 14 oh. carat. We're taking care of go. Yes. Things going real good, huh? Yeah, they're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I don't know anything to talk about. My mind left me when I walked out here. I walked out, my mind said, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Happens to me all the time on the show. Nothing new. I went to the bathroom on me. <laughs> That's okay. Just put it on hold. I mean, and I'm just sitting here in a great deal of panic. I'm going, <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> Sometimes that helps. Just it does. Yeah, last night, it Last night, in a moment of sheer panic, I started whist uh, whistling through my nose. Really? For Ramona, for no reason a at all. fly just went by. The same fly we had out here with... <laughs> so, um... What have you been doing? Huh? I just, uh... <laughs> you know, my mother's the only person... When you ask that, I have to laugh. My mother's the only person in the world who calls me and says, What have you been doing lately? Uh -huh. I'm on every night. Yeah. So she will, she'll call me if I don't call every week and says, What have you been doing lately? I said, Same, same thing, Mama, the old television show. Like, what does your mother feel about what you do? I mean, it's, how does she look at you? I think parents and children sometimes, they know you so well as a person, they have it, not, nothing special particularly. I'm sure they're proud, like your parents are, uh -huh. and Tim's parents, uh -huh. but they don't treat you like the general public. The general yes. public sees you say, ah, yeah. Richie Pryor, yeah. Tim Conway. Well, now, when you go home, you don't yeah. get that, do you? Not at all. Your kids look at you, your kids look at you and say, hi, Dad, or whatever. My kids are the They'll kids. go see somebody else. I remember when I was writing for Red Skelton years ago, I was doing a local show. I didn't really want to know, Johnny. I'm just kidding. Well, I didn't really want to know that much. I told you, I told you a lot more than you really wanted to know. Well, anyway, now that I'm now that I'm rolling, I was writing for Skelton, and I had a local show on KNXT, and in comes Red Skelton kids and run over to me. That shows you the thing. There was their dad, one of the biggest stars in the world, but they'd seen me on television. That's all. That's the. That's the. Dick Gregory told me one time he was walking with his kids, and and the man came up and asked for his autograph, and his children said, "What do they want your autograph for? You ain't nobody." Yeah. That's the whole attitude. My kids were in the car with me. We were driving, and my kids were. They said I asked them had they been making obscene phone calls. You know, because when you're young, you call people up and go, hi, run, 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 and say something and hang up. You know, that's, that's fun. Problem, yeah. you know? And my kids confessed that they did, and, they, and my daughter said, I called up somebody, and we had a radio contest. And I said, what was it? Said, well, I asked this person, said, who's the funniest guy in the world? You win $50,000. And the guy said, Steve Martin. I said, that's right. And I almost ran off the freeway. <laughs> Your own daughter. Yeah, my own daughter. I said, well, of course, they don't see you in that light. I said, well, Steve, you got to get him to get you something for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Take you to the park next yeah, week, yeah, right? Yeah. And a nice vacation, because you're going to be home. Uh, I'm going to do this. We're going to come right back. So, and that's a promise.
were here last time, weren't you talking about your dad? My dad? Yeah, you said he was a strong disciplinarian when you oh, were growing up. Oh, my father would just say things that make you pee on yourself. <laughs> mm. That's tough. Yeah. yeah he, tough guy. He could call my name, Richard! <laughs> Was it just fear? Huh? Yes, was it, it was just... plain fear. In other words, your mother... My mother was cool. My mother yeah. cool because she knew she could tell him. She'd yeah. look at me and go, I'm going to tell your father. <laughs> and I'd panic because my father had an approach about things. You know, he'd just say things like, he'd be reading the newspaper. Give me a piece of paper. Yeah. Okay. Right? He'd be reading the newspaper and he wouldn't ever say anything. He'd go... <laughs> <laughs> But that was, was it. it. Trouble, huh? And the man next door, the kids next door, though, was really panicked. Their father was mean because the man would come out, and the kids, if they did not hear him come out on the porch and go, <clears throat> if they didn't hear that and get home in three minutes, that was it. And that's all he would say. He'd go, <clears throat> and kids, we'd be playing basketball, cat be going, what? <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My grandmother used to, my grandmother used to give, you know them trees with them switches? Birch, you, know, birch. You, you ever have to break them off yourself to get, uh, my grandma used to make me go get them. <laughs> you know, she'd say, boy, go get me something to beat you. <laughs> and, and it would be, you know, it, it would be the longest walk in the world. Right? <laughs> I would be hoping it would snow, or, and, and you get to switch, and you'd be coming home, and it'd be killing the wind, right? You'd be, you know, <laughs> and it'd make you start crying before you get in the house. You'd be, mama, mama, please, mama, mama, and my grandmother, she would just get mad and just whoop you with anything, like, you know, old douchebag cards, anything. Yeah. Just, just, and those hurt. Oh, man, yeah. big old hot water bottles, that's what they called them, right? Hot yeah. water bottles, just hold eight gallons of water, just... It was embarrassing. And, uh, <laughs> I'm telling the truth, man. People went, people went, which bank card? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but maybe they did that out of love. Oh, uh, sure, yes, I know. It had to be love. <laughs> <laughs> now, how, how are you with your kids? How old are your kids now? My kids... When you have to discipline, do you... I, I, <clears throat> I, I'm not very good at it. First, yeah. I started out uh, spanking. I tried spanking. Then you realize that. But I looked not in their face, because they can look at you so like... <laughs> spanked me and I would feel awful so I tried talking to them you know and and my kids are um, real life stuff if, if, if you don't mind I hope you, you can put it out right I mean my kids one day my daughter rain just came into me and she was talking about my grandmother had been t uh, took her for a ride and was talking to her it was a lot of pressure for her you know she's eight years old yeah. and she, she, she looked at me she said daddy I just wish they'd get off my back <laughs> known as a child's plea. <laughs> of course, you can, un you can understand that. That's, co that's communicating. I mean, you know what's on her mind right away. Yeah, she said, she said, I think, I think grandmother is a racist now because every time we go down the street and she says, honky this and honky that, and my mother's white, right? I said, okay, now what am I supposed to do, okay? So now what am I supposed to do? I said, well, go tell your grandmother how you feel. <laughs> tell her the truth. Walk right in there and tell her. I said, but there's a price for telling the truth to your grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> I said, she is going to beat you. But, but she went in there and I saw her in the yard with a switch later. Don't let This is getting a win, yeah. Well, I think that's, uh, that's uh, direct, and the parents can understand that kind of... Uh, yeah. So uh, I talked to my kids, though. I said, look, I don't like what you did, and I don't think you respect yourself. But you still love them. You still love Oh, I love them. Oh, they got my heart, man. They can yeah. just do stuff to you. Sitting in your lap and just, oh, daddy. And that's it. Daddy. It's, it's all thrilled. It's finished. Well, I, guys are pushovers, usually, for little girls. Oh, man, they're just so beautiful, and they're just sharp and smart, and they're full of life, and they make you happy. They say good things to you, you know, yeah. tell you they love you. And you're going to spoil, just... spoil them right Oh, back, can't help it. Can't yeah. help it. It's beautiful, huh? You wouldn't spank them now. No. See, no. usually when you spank, you do it in anger, and they say that's wrong. Yeah, no. I, I thought I was doing what my parents did to me, and that messed me up. And I just going to mess them up the same way I messed right. up, and I don't want to do that. That's <laughs> <laughs> not the little children. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we'll take a break. We'll be right back with some more eight-year-old dialogue. Thank you, 
Tom. We're talking with Tim Conway, Richard Pryor. What I mentioned earlier about your concert being in film, Tim, Tim asked me, wasn't sure whether it was a live performance. It was concert. In other words, they filmed your, your concert you do. Yes, work. no, they filmed a, a couple of nights at Long Beach uh, right. when I was doing my uh, things for the court. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and By the way, how are things? Do you all you're through the court thing now? Uh, just about. I only have, uh, I have to do 400 more concerts. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the judge was very liberal. Very and, good. <laughs> and, uh, no, that's all, all behind me now. It's all oh, cool. Oh, 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 yes. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Uh, no, they filmed the concert. I wanted to, you know, Bill Cosby and I were in California suite together. Right. Right? And the, the movie, I think, is very funny. And they really got after Bill and I's performance, not for us, but for what they thought. They thought it was a racial slur against black people to have us in the film. And I heard that. And it's interesting to talk about it. And, because... and, and that we were in the film, and we're, we're the only black people, and we're the only ones doing slapstick comedy. And uh, they, they, the reviewers, uh, uh, these white men, found this offensive. <laughs> For black people, they, they got a consciousness all of a sudden, and uh, it's not fair to uh, uh, people like Neil Simon and Herb Ross, Ray Stark, Bill Cosby, or myself, or Gloria Gifford and uh, Sheila Fraser, you know, the people that were in the segment that we were in, because we loved it doing it. And it was burlesque, it was slapstick. And that's what it was supposed to be, and, and uh, not that anybody cares, but I wanted to mention, in case you do care, and no. that, uh, that I would love to, I would work with them people anytime, because I think they're uh, men, uh, men with a lot of principles, and we had no way meant to do nothing but be funny and that's what I thought we were well you see if four white people would have done that same sketch <clears throat> nobody would have said anything but see they there's all black blessed, people working yeah. and they didn't like it and we had a job <laughs> 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 In, uh, in defense of the reviewers, you know, they are, uh, <laughs> they are really uh, uh, nice people. I know, you know, when I go out and have a, an interview or something, and, you know, you're cutting their meat for them, and I think that... <laughs> person of that intelligence has a right to say what he feels That's right. race, you know. Yeah, cool. So you, you feed him a little bit, and then they write a review on you. It's I should have done that. I yeah. never thought of that. Whole life is a review. I think life is a gong show. This That's right. You do? Whole life is a big, and one they big ring gong, big gong, gong show. And they the big gong on yeah, the God is going to say, this is a whole gong, gong show. That's all it is. And they lead you off. Well, I don't believe that. I okay. <laughs> Well, you're, you're entitled, I mean, you know. Uh, yes, I don't. Where were we? Here we are. Here we are. We're here. here. Yes, my mind just came back. Hi, Rich. Hello. <laughs> so anyway. Here, but uh, not in my concerts. Usually when I was, I did one concert one time, I walked out on stage and was nothing but white people in the audience and scared me to death. Really? <laughs> I did, because I walked out, I usually go, I have a line, usually like I open and I look at the audience and I say, white people, you know, because there's hardly like two white people in the audience, so it's really funny, but you walk out and it's all white people, that ain't funny. No, when you go, hey, white people, they go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they look at you go, sure, of course. <laughs> And usually when, uh, usually when white people come to see me work, they usually take notes or look like they're doing some kind of sociological research. Or... Well, what does that word mean, Martha? Um, is that really, uh, do they talk like that? Oh, you've got a good mix of an audience, though, don't you? Yes, I would, I, I, I would look. I think that I have a good mix of an audience. Was that your question? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I think one I haven't used uh, recently, and yes, I throw it in uh, I think I have a good when black people are here. I only oh, save it for oh, uh, black yes. people. Oh, I'm, uh, mm -hmm. No, well, I, I do. I have a, I have a mixture of audience. Not many Chinese people. Uh, <laughs> they're tough, real tough. Yeah, they're kind of hard to laugh. Uh, they, they really don't laugh much. They go, "Wow, well, so <laughs> How would you like to go to China now? That I would. Oh, I would love older, you know. to go to China. I would too. I would just love. I, I just think Chinese food is so great. <laughs> And they go, no, I would love to go to China because Chinese people probably got some weird ideas about black people. You know, because any place usually where white Americans go, they always say black people have tails and, <laughs> you know, and things like that. And Chinese people probably be looking at you talking about, you know, tails. No, I just think China, I mean, it's a billion people. You should be friendly with a billion of anything. <laughs> What well, we ought to do, we ought to get to you. I went to Conway. a Chinese restaurant. Wait yeah. a minute, Johnny. And the funniest thing I ever heard in my life, the Chinese waiter that stuttered. <laughs> I mean, 
the man was stuttering in Chinese. He was like, <laughs> 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 and his friends was trying to help him. They were getting mad at him, going, Chuck up on my guitar! And he was still stuck in Well, if we go to China, I want to go with you, Conway, Pat McCormick, oh my God. and Harvey Corman. We all go together. <laughs> okay. And they will probably end their diplomatic relations with, <laughs> with, with the United States the next week. Uh -huh. But for a week, it would be... Uh, oh, it would be fun. It would be an awful lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, because they could be fascinating people. As you say, you got a billion of everything. I hear the premier of China spits in a platoon, right? The guy has a platoon, and they tried to ask the networks to edit out that part when they showed the film, because he's talking uh, to the Americans, and he goes, Well, shake. <laughs> and they said, please edit those parts out of the film, you know, because of the image. And I thought it was really folksy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on, we'll take a break. We'll be right, 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 in, right back. Our good friend, uh, <laughs> Doctor. Dr. Lennon Smith is with us tonight. If you haven't met him, he has uh, his television show is not as long as yours, uh, special. It's a matter of fact, it's a minute and a half syndicated television messages throughout the country called House Calls. Uh, he's been with us before, and he'll be with us again. <laughs> Would you welcome Dr. Lennon Smith? Congratulations on your, I was on your master's win. the other night, and um, uh, they, they had a little uh, review of a, of a, about a book uh, by Lord Trimmingham called uh, Lord The Trimmingham. Go Betweens. And uh -huh. it, it said, and I thought, this is the answer to all pediatricians. We should know this and have it on the wall. It said, uh, Lord Trimmingham said, um, the lady is never wrong. Now, I've found that. My wife has been telling me that for years. Right. But if you don't see it in print, why, well, you usually don't get that message. Now, when a woman brings her child in the office and said, he's sick. You know, he's sick, and you keep looking until right. you find he's sick, or you make him sick or something, but because the kid, the kid is sick. And you can't examine him and say he's not sick, because they'll go to another doctor, and that's bad for business. So you find that he's sick, or you find he's got pinworms, or, you know, there's, there's something that's going on with that child, because the mother knows best. It's really when, when the baby has come from her, she's lived with this kid for 24 hours a day, and uh, the father brings the kid and said, my wife says he's sick, looks okay to me. So, uh, and, and so he's not, you know, we, right. but we believe the woman. And it really makes some sense. And we've been, the, the times that we're burned are the times we don't believe that woman. So for heaven's sake, if a woman comes on and says something, believe her. You just uh -huh. nod your head. It's not being henpecked. It's just, uh, it's, it's God's truth. They've got some message that God gave to them that when they say something. <laughs> My, my wife says that the, the bad behavior of our children is from the bad genes from the father's side of the family, and, and it's often, it's often true. You get the woman's response. And Did I ask you a question yet? <laughs> yes, you asked me if I've been reading things. Ah, <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. I, I interrupted you. No, you didn't interrupt me at all. I just, hello, doctor, and uh, you, were on, you, were on, you were on Western Airlines with Lord Trimmingham or yes. somebody. <laughs> So you did get it. Did you listen? That's Lord Trimmingham. Oh, did yes, of course. Yeah, I didn't. Right. I wasn't aware that he had said yeah. that. Did oh, you also know right. that uh, <laughs> he said that? Yes. If you'd flown among Western, other things, you would have known sure. that Portland, Oregon was just about wiped out. We just uh, were, we were on the map. Very right for Portland. We've got uh, ice up there that you wouldn't believe. And my, well, I'd believe it if you my, tell me. My, my wife, again, who, yes. uh, who believes in, uh, you know, sometimes she thinks yeah. I'm okay. <laughs> we, she said, you know what's happening tonight? Because we were in 39 degrees huddled in the, That's around those. Below zero. Or, you know, around this kind of, this, <laughs> this package that right. doesn't burn well. Right. And she said, you know what we're doing? We're talking. Because yeah. <laughs> we're usually right. watching TV or complaining or talking on the phone. We were talking to one another. Right, that's good. And that's, you know, sort of bad weather forces people to get close together. So I think... <laughs> what's, uh, no. what's new in medicine? Well, 
We've got a we've got a flu going around that you wouldn't. Flu. Let's get our flu's good subject. Flu. The flu is is very bad. Why and can't it, they cure the flu, doctor? Oh, we can. Oh. Oh yes, yes. You I just keep that. ahead of it, <laughs> freeze it out. Now we have a, what they call a Russian type flu now, right? That's right. Yeah. Now, what's I the what's there was the a Russian Burbank flu and there's there a Portland flu? They're all really the same. Basically, it's a high fever and a headache, and your eyeballs hurt, and you don't want to move. Ah, the old hurting and eyeball so syndrome. Yes. Yeah. And then the fever comes down, and then there's this ar, ar, ar kind of cough that goes on for seven days. So it's a 10-day illness. It's a very standard type of illness. And there's illness. nothing you can do to, to shorten that oh, time yes, at there, all. There's there's there is. Things. Of course, a lot of things lots you can lots do. Of, uh, we He's going to tell you some of them. The best, the best cough syrup was that the gin, lemon, juice, and honey. Gin, and, uh, lemon, juice, and honey. You know, we ran out of that one night, and the kids came in and were standing and barking by the bed one night, and I had, a, I had to give them, I didn't have the right ingredients, so it was bourbon and some uh, antihistaminic and some um, molasses. It was so bad, they never complained again. So you, you know, if, if you make the cough syrup taste too good, they're in there every 20 minutes, you know, coughing and barking and stuff, so you have to kind of uh, watch that. But we, we, it, does, it does work if you know it's coming. You have a, you have a question for the doctor, Richie, about... Uh... Do your children have any ills, uh, Rich? Or that, uh, I mean, since the doctor's here, you can My save a house call. My experience has been that um, kids that are blue-eyed are more likely to get uh, beaten by their grandmothers because they're more likely to be uh, in a bad behavior. But... <laughs> Yeah. We'll give him some, give I guess him his, some cough syrup. Yes, his kids are all well. Tim, do you have anything wrong with your kids at home? Oh, I'm sorry. Just to begin. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing I just, some uh, research I on... I was wondering if you had an opinion. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm doing, some, uh, doing some research on people that uh, end up as they have. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yes. People, people like this are more likely to have been very ticklish as little children. Were you, were you ticklish? Huh? Were you ticklish? No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Only developed lately. It, it, it means that. Uh, Why? You mean those of us who are a little, ticklish, uh, a little yes. crazy were are, are more likely to be sensitive? It's just a little rule, and you notice the stethoscope, and we can't feel the. Wait a minute, Richie's going to do the famous that. trick with a handkerchief. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, excuse me, no, I thought you were, <laughs> thought you were going to do that famous magic trick that you do at parties, but I guess not. <laughs> I, I have... Um, just, just blew his nose, that's it. My, my work with children who have uh, give teachers trouble in school are that they're very tickly sensitive, goosey kind of kids, and I've invented them, uh, but I can't pat, and it's a long pole with a lot of feathers hanging oh, out. My teacher... That's a, that sounds like fun. First day of school has the, Can the I get kids one of those? all... <laughs> As the kids all lie down uh, supine on the floor, naked preferably, and she lowers this pole with the feathers on it and see which kids uh, break first. And those are the ones that are going to have trouble. They're, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, they're, they're, they seem to have more trouble. But uh, we, we Hypersensitive. Found...